Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews and we're going to do a new nerdy experiment today. So what we're going to do is not smart, it's not something that you can recommend to people to do or even to try. It's something that I can do and that I want to do and that's the whole reason why I'm doing it. This is, I guess, science as long as we write it down. So let's show you the test setup for today. So here is our test setup. We have the Straight Power 11 power supply, a Shadow Rock Top Flow 2, Silent Wings 2 fan, and then we have our motherboard. This is the MSI B350i Pro AC, 16 gigs of memory, and we have the Ryzen 2400G APU that I just reviewed. What makes this test awesome is that none of this stuff is mine, so if I break it, I don't care. Because what we're going to use is we're going to use this ball of ice, which is horribly overexposed. Let me dial that back a little bit for you guys. We have a ball of ice here. We're going to put all the ice inside the lunchbox, add some water, and then I put thermal paste on top of here, flip the entire thing upside down, boot it, and see what temperatures we get. So let's get started with the uh, annoying part. So this ice is actually pretty cold. I should probably break it up a little bit as well. That's probably good enough. The most difficult bit about this build is going to be uh, turning the system on again and making sure my hands are dry whenever I touch the motherboard. As long as there's no wet stuff touching the electrical stuff, we should be fine in theory. It's quite annoying that AMD no longer solders their IHSs onto the die, so now it's just thermal paste on there as well. I hope that's not going to screw around with my numbers too much, but then this is very dodgy signs at least. So I've got all the, um, the cables bent over backwards, so hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. And nothing is actually touching the ice, so that's cool. The reason I got this cooler on here for this test is not just that I had it laying around, but it's that it screws in from the rear, which is really handy when you're working upside down. All right, so now for the part that's going to literally hurt everyone. Pouring water into a computer. That's not even for sale yet at the time of filming this video. I should probably get a lot more water than this. Turns out I actually need quite a lot of water, so I just went and got another cup. And there we go, we're just flooding the shadow rock. But there's still, I guess, about a centimeter and a half between the water and the memory sticks. So we should be fine. Let's power it on. Now, small issue, this motherboard does not have onboard power buttons and I don't have a power switch. So I have to um, do the good old screwdriver trick, which is quite hard because it's, there we go. We just started the entire system. All right, so we are in Windows and the results of this test are very, very underwhelming. As we can see, the ice is melting alarmingly quickly actually, which is also rising the water level. That may have been a stupid oversight of me. And um, well, the temperatures aren't all that impressive. Now, granted, it is, I guess, passively cooled right now, but we're running into 24 degrees Celsius. So let's hit a stress test at what I think is a stock frequency. And let's have a look at other temperatures as well. So we still didn't short everything down, which I guess is a good thing, but I'm going to stop the stress test real quick and overclock this system because stock clock speeds are obviously incredibly boring to do testing like this at, even if your temperatures only max out at 41 degrees Celsius. All right then, so 1.5 volts on the CPU to get 4.1 gigahertz. We may push it a bit further later on. Let's first see if this thing's even stable and what sort of temperatures we'll get with this really janky cooling solution. So sure, I've only been running this for half a minute, but I think it's time to push it even further. All right, so um, it won't, it doesn't like 4.2 gigahertz because the timer just stopped and I'm very sure that it won't react to anything that I do at this time or at this point in time. Nope, no movement whatsoever. So um, let's reboot and run some benchmarks at 4.1. 
All right, so in a very interesting turn of events, although not at all a surprising one, the system will no longer boot. Now, I'm very sure this is not down to the janky cooling solution because this was also an issue that I was getting a lot while doing the benchmarking for the review. All right, and it pushed through again. So incredible what just clearing a CMOS can do for you. All right, so as I said, nothing that I wasn't expecting from this chip because this stuff crashes a lot. Now, the interesting thing is we're getting 14 degrees Celsius CPU temperatures, which is lower than ambient. Always fun. Um, now, the thing is, whenever you clear the CMOS, the memory kind of resets itself. So you have to re-enable the XMP profile and leave DRAM frequency to auto. If you mess with this, the entire system just crashes. Um, the same goes for other stuff, like for example, our integrated graphics configuration. If you mess around with this stuff twice in a row, everything crashes. So let's mess around once and use Ryzen Master for all our overclocking now. All right, so while Windows reboots and Ryzen Master applies our changes, let's add a bit more ice because this stuff is melting really quickly. And I mean, the water is still really frigging cold as well, but we need maximum cooling because we're going to attempt to run a few benchmarks at 4.1 gigahertz on the CPU and 1600 megahertz on the GPU. And hopefully we can get something that kind of resembles a world record along the way because no one's overclocking on these chips. All right, we're finished benchmarking. Let's have a look at these results. I'm actually really excited at looking where I place. It's a valid score, hooray. So 13,000 on the graphics and 10,700 on the CPU. I really wonder where I place for people with this APU. So I can't apparently find out where I place for this CPU because I just got the mystery machine award. So that's a really hard one to get. All right, so our system also made it through fire strike, but all the ice is gone. And if I add any more, the water levels are going to rise too much. So just to end this video, you can do this, but it's a super dumb idea. So don't do it. Uh, that was the last thing I wanted to say before I start making a massive wet mess of my office. Anyway, guys, if you like this video and you want to see more stupid stuff, hit that like button and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. For actual decent content, um, subscribe to this channel. I put up a lot of really high quality reviews. And if you want to support the channel like the awesome people on the screen right now, there's a Patreon link. I cannot move this table. I'm gonna just hands off. Also, for more frequent updates, Instagram and Twitter linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.